The musical period stretching from 1600 to 1750 was called the Baroque period. Taken from the Portuguese word Barocco. Wait a minute, you mean like Barocco Obama? No, I mean like the Portuguese word Barocco, which means oddly shaped pearl. The Baroque period was one of the richest and most diverse periods in music history. The world, at the time, seemed vast and infinite. Copernicus's heliocentric theory was widely accepted, along with the notion of gravity. The telescope was a huge invention of the time period and forced us to look beyond our own oblate spheroid. Philosophers like Descartes, Hobbes, and Locke tackled questions of our existence, while artists like Rubens and Rembrandt breathe new life into artistic culture. Foreign trade and colonization helped expand European nations. As a result, a new middle class began to rise in the midst of the poor and the super wealthy. Yay! Expanding upon the Renaissance ideals from ancient Greece and Rome, musicians believed music was a powerful tool of communication and could evoke emotion in its listeners. I still love you! Anyway, there was a bigger distinction between vocal music and instrumental music, as instrumental music started to become increasingly popular in concert settings. Still, it was really difficult to make a living as a musician in the Baroque period. You only made it if you were on the payroll of a political or religious institution. Plus, if you were employed, you had to compose music based on what your employer wanted. So, if they wanted you to write a song about pigs, you wrote about pigs. Spider pig, spider pig, does whatever a spider pig does. The Baroque period was all about contrasts. Loud versus soft, solo versus ensemble, simplicity versus complexity, Coke versus Pepsi. You get the idea. The lute and the sackbutt continued to be popular, but the trumpet and the violin grew in popularity. However, the most popular Baroque instrument was the harpsichord. A harpsichord is a musical instrument played by means of a keyboard which activates a row of levers that in turn trigger a mechanism that plucks one or more strings with a small plectrum. Huh? Anyway, musicians started to get good. I mean really good. So good that the best of the best started to incorporate ornamentation into their playing. No, not that kind of ornament. <laughs> musicians would take a simple melody and improve it by adding additional improvised notes, kind of like this. Public concerts were rare, but became more and more common. This made it easier for the middle class to hear great music just like the upper class. Like the Renaissance, many Baroque composers hailed directly from Italy, like Monteverdi, Corelli, and Vivaldi. However, other composers started to appear in countries like Germany, France, and England. And in this corner, hailing from Germany, we have Johann Pachelbel, George Friedrich Handel, and Johann Sebastian Bach. And in this corner, from the land of cheese and baguettes, give it up for Francois Couperin and Jean-Philippe Rameau. And last but certainly not least, coming directly to us from the streets of London where they drive on the wrong side, put your hands together for Henry Purcell. The Baroque period brought about new vocal art forms called the oratorio, cantata, and most importantly, opera, which is a drama that is primarily sung, accompanied by instruments, and presented on stage. In the world of instrumental music, the status of the solo performer was elevated with the concerto, a composition for an orchestra and a brilliant soloist. And to make a long story short, too late! Barack Obama is not a real person. <laughs> Gravity told us that if we drop things, they fall. Music can evoke great emotion. Why are you crying? 
The harpsichord was the most popular instrument, but the sackbut is still kicking. <laughs> Musicians started using ornamentation to make easy pieces difficult and to decorate their Christmas trees. Concertos were like rock concerts for extraordinary musicians. Oh, an opera singer sang everything. Mm-hmm.